record in the, in the cloud. And if you don't mind muting yourself so we uh, reduce background noises, we will reopen towards the end of our chat today for sharing. We will also be looking at uh, chat questions. I've already received a, a question via email, which we will address later. Uh, the, the, the model or the, the manner of the, this chat will be, I will be introducing Sifu Picard to my family, uh, maybe to his family, and mostly let him uh, be, let him share. I will ask some questions of him that I have thought of asking. So welcome everyone. My name is Roland Thomas and uh, I'm in St. Catharines, Ontario, near Toronto. Uh, we met uh, Sifu Bikar and I in 2006, gee, time goes fast. When coming back from Colorado where I had lived for a decade, I had come across the uh, Qigong in Colorado I had been mostly a yogi before that, practicing yoga, and uh, I had been a runner. But I, I've become interested to Qigong, because you always learn in life. I was blessed, really, to come across a book, and I met a few teachers there. Uh, it was mostly a meditation-type Qigong. Uh, while, uh, when I, so when I came to St. Catherine, I was wanting to continue my, my research, my study. And there was a class being held at a university here with Sifu Picard. And I, uh, I tried to sign up, but it got canceled for some reason. So I went to his dojo, his teaching, uh, I suppose, a gym, a dojo. And we met and we chit chatted and I signed up for classes and uh, more came out of that. But let me share a little bit uh, why I'm so passionate about Qigong and Tai Chi and this, this type of uh, meditative martial art. And also uh, happy and passionate to have met uh, my instructor, Sifu Picard. Sifu means teacher or conveyor of knowledge. Uh, because as a runner, as a long distance runner, I had, plus previously in my life, I had had severe back problems and also tendonitis of the knee, which was chronic. It just wouldn't go away. But I, I sort of got over those and I was able to run actively. But as a runner, you frequently get injured. It's not natural to run for hours, for four hours, for example, or 26 miles. The body takes a toll. And so I, I would often end up at a massage for a good massage, a body uh, massage, or visiting chiropractor uh, quasi monthly, sometimes twice, sometimes four times a month, because I was a tenacious runner. I just didn't want to quit. But uh, so when I came to, uh, to Qigong with Sifu Picard, after a few weeks of practicing, and I, I was very excited about it. I, I, I attended two classes a week on Tuesday and Saturday, but I also practiced, uh, started practicing daily for about 30 minutes, sometimes longer. Lo and behold, I, I realized I didn't need a massage anymore. As well, didn't feel like seeing a chiropractor. Uh, you know, I was sort of fixing my, my body every day instead of letting it become, you know, inflammation, uh, an inflammation situation, which is what leads to injuries. So I realized the benefit of Qigong very early on, those were physical benefits. Uh, I could certainly share with you how good you feel when you do, uh, be it 20 minutes or an hour of the uh, specifically the 24 postures that you will be sharing or will be explaining, uh, but also mentally and also focus-wise, spiritually, uh, uh, the joy in life uh, comes up. It's a form of meditation as well. 
So there's many benefits uh, in practicing this particular form of Qigong. I'm sure there's a, like yoga, there's hundreds of different teachings, but uh, I'm very skeptical person. Some of you that know me, uh, for example, when I came across uh, the bio superfood formulas from our Russian scientist, Dr. Michael Kiria, I questioned them for a year. You know, I'm just, I tend to not believe unless I can feel, unless I can really verify. Uh, so I had no doubt very soon after starting to practice the 24 posture Qigong that this was the real deal. I looked into the lineage, I looked into the teachers and the teacher, teachers' teachers. And uh, to this day, I'm quite uh, happy and grateful to have met uh, Sifu George Picard, who is with us. I'd like to introduce him, let him maybe start talking, which he has a good uh, ease of doing. Welcome, Sifu Picard. Thanks, Roland. So glad to be here. I love this kind of stuff, passing out information to people so uh, uh, they can make a, a qualified decision about whether this is something they should do for a healing modality. But uh, just to clarify, now he tells one side of the story, I'm going to tell the other side. The other side is he came into my school one day, and by the way, dojo is a dap Japanese term. Do is the Tao. Do, Joe is place. So it's a way place. It's a place you go to study the way of karate. So here's just a studio. I don't know the Chinese equivalent, but anyway. So he came into the school and he wanted to do Qigong. So he started doing the Qigong and the Tai Chi. And I like to get to know people. So after talking to him for a little while, and I said, so what do you do? And it was like pulling teeth to get information. For him. Well, I'm a naturopath. Oh, where do you practice? Well, I don't really have a practice. Well, do you see clients that could perhaps send some to you? No, I don't really see. Well, what do you do? Well, I've got this, this bio superfood stuff. Well, what is that? Of course, I had, had to draw the information out of them. I said, so what does this bio superfood do? Because I don't take supplements, but I did at the time. Never had. I tried many, and uh, there was one I did for a while. But anyway, he, so he says, well, you know, people who have uh, pain issues, it helps. People who have sleep issues, it helps. People have this kind of illness, diabetes, whatever. He says it helps and it showed, and here's some testimonials. And I said, my God, that just sounds like Chicago. So I started taking it. And of course, myself, I use intuition. And I started taking lots of it. And I noticed some interesting things. I've been on it ever since. You know, I had what, three or four already today. And it's something that I just don't want to be without. Can I put my finger on what it's doing? No, I just know. Because there's other things that are going on. Plus, I do the Chicago every day. So they have various things. But Chicago, from a standpoint, is a self-healing system. It involves more than just taking supplements. Supplements are just that it supplements what you do. So I looked at it as to supplement my, my Qigong with particular, it's algae and so on. And, and uh, you know, it's good for the body from a chemical standpoint. But the Qigong itself, what people don't understand is that everybody wants everybody to fix them or somebody else to fix them. Well, I got a bad back. I'll go to a chiropractor. Oh, my muscles are so go to a massage therapist. Oh, I've got this. Go for a doctor. I've got this. And go. Now, that doesn't mean they're not necessary, but they're there to support what you do. The healing is up to you. So we've lost the understanding that the body is a self-healing organism. It's designed to do that. If it didn't, we would never live past birth. We'd hit there, hit all the bacteria, and we'd be dead. So the immune system kicks in right away and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Then, of course, the majority of the population, I'll assume a majority, does things to actually reduce the immune system. And so they get weaker and weaker and weaker. When that happens, they're susceptible to all kinds of illnesses and so on. Yet, the, the simplest way to put it, that I've always found, is that if you break a bone, say you break a bone in your arm, you go to the doctor, he puts a cast on it. He says, come back in eight weeks. He'll come back and take the cast off. The bone's healed by itself. How did that happen? You didn't have to think about it. You didn't have to focus on it. It happens automatically because that's what the immune system does. For example, if you get a virus, we've all heard about viruses uh, right now. A virus will attack the body. It'll go in there and it'll start devastating. The immune system tries to pick up. If it's strong enough, it can ward it off, defend against it, and help fight it. 
right? It's called Wei Qi. Wei Qi is external Qi. So as any pathogen comes in towards the body, the Wei Qi is there. If it's strong enough, it'll fight it. And if it gets into the body, it'll continue to fight it and you know, generally wins the fight. But if your immune system is weak, how can this happen? The virus will come in and just devastate the whole system. So what do you need to have a good immune system? And this is, now everything I talk about is called evidence-based. Now evidence-based means it's been clinically, medically uh, tried, tested in experiments and so on. A blind study, uh, peer reviewed, all these kinds of things. Now I've been involved in a couple of studies that have been published, that's in PubMed. And some of my students, Professor Penelope Klein, PhD and a physiotherapist for t- teacher for 28 years. Dr. Joe Baumgart, great guy. He's he's a student. He did it. He got certified years ago, but he's just brilliant as uh, adjunct professor at Juvenile College in Buffalo. Plus, he's also a Chicago instructor. Plus, he's also a physical therapist. So he looks at the Western exercise science of things, which people generally don't know. Now. Generally speaking, you take a medical doctor, he understands you've got bones and muscles, you may know all the names and so on, but what's the function as you go through? And how would that affect an immune system? So the simple part is most people are stressed out right now. And even if they're not, because of what's going on, they were stressed out from their job, perhaps from their family, perhaps something that's going on in their life, relationships, whatever the case may be. And they get to a point where they're so stressed out, they don't even know it. And then what happens when you are stressed out, you produce adrenaline consistently, you produce um, uh, cortisol consistently. And these are the inflammatory uh, chemicals that go into the body, hormones. So as a continuous diet of this, it creates inflammation, which is one of the biggest causes of illness is inflammation. And then from that inflammation, it's the immune system drops. It can't go up. I'll give you a simple example. One study that was done you have these hormones called interleukin. And there's uh, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 10, but two I'll pick out in the study. Interleukin-6 is a hormone that is an inflammatory hormone. Interleukin-10 is an anti-inflammatory hormone. What happens when inflammation from all sources increases, that all of a sudden the interleukin-10 decreases. Well, why is that important? Interleukin-10, as it comes up, allows other natural killing cells in the body, specifically ones for cancer. They can go out, now they can be active. When inflammation is down, cancer-fighting natural killer cells are down, and guess what? It's, things don't function properly. So this we know, again, from science. Um, so stress in it of itself is anti-inflammatory. So now you have stress, you have inflammation, you have cortisol, and uh, you know, I use these terms but to give you a, a greater idea which cortisol do. Well, cortisol, they use, if you have a, an organ transplant, they will use cortisol to destroy the immune system. In other words, to break it down. Why? So your immune system doesn't attack the new organ, which is what it actually does. That's how powerful this cortisol is. And yet we've got it through our, our body all the time. Now, studies out of uh, Japan and China uh, Harvard University showed that if you do mindful movement, even meditation, that that reduces cort- cortisol in a 14-week period. If you do it every day for 30 minutes for 14 days, it reduces it by 40%. Inflammation drops up, the immune system increases, and life is good. But it goes far beyond that. Matter of fact, I was reading a study, and we have some studies, by the way, on our, on our website. And you go to thevillageofhealingandwellness.com or georgepicard.com and go to learn more and read the study. Some that we published, some that other scientists have published. I was reading one again today about the COVID-19 and respiratory infections like COPD and how Qigong actually functions with that and the science behind it. And then you go to the science, you read all the references, it goes on forever. I mean, these are serious studies. But to give it basically to the Qigong, when you do the mind-body meditation, which is with deep breathing, abdominal breathing, you reduce, the, um, you reduce stress, you reduce the inflammation, you boost your immune, immune response. That's the first things that happen in a very short period of time. Then from that, beyond that, you have to take a look, okay, how does the body function? Well, if we understand that we're all energetic beings, 
where we go down to the microscope in, in the molecular structure, we'll say. It's energy. And I, atoms form molecules, molecules form cells. And all of a sudden now we have this entire energy body. So it depends on energy to be uh, viable. And it has to have a good balance of that energy to have good health. So what is that? Well, in Chinese medicine, if you have an excess or deficiency, you're going to have an illness. So the Qigong helps balance out the, the yin and yang energy. So there's no excess or deficiency in the body, which goes through 12 major organs, all connected, all functioning together. One set feeds the next, feeds the next, which means it's fed by. And if that energy that's called the creative cycle maintains itself through good energy, you have good health. Simple enough. And then you have other, there's total of 20 meridians in your system. So if we work just on the energy level of the body, it's fabulous. But we have these things of movement. So when you get into movement, and how does the movement affect your health? Posture is huge. So if you have a good upright posture, you have good health. The organs sit in place as they should. The spine is erect just as it should be. And we're not leaning forward all the time, which weakens the muscles and so on. Exercises. What about the, the intercostal muscles, the respiratory muscles? How do you strengthen that? There's exercises, physical exercise, science again, and some of the postures that we do that actually strengthen the intercostal and exterior intercostal muscles that surround the lung and the rib cage. So that's important. What about uh, fascia? Fascia is huge. Everything in your body is covered by fascia. Organs and tissues and, and uh, uh, muscles and joints and bones. And they found new science on fascia finds that the energy has to move through here. You can have a pain in your body and it's not there. It's in your fascia somewhere else. It's fascinating. The new science that's coming out. So what we do is we do fascial stretching in every part of the body, all joints, all muscles, everything. Then once you get that done, what about the cleaning out the toxins? When well, I'm doing the Qigong, we, we clean the interstitial fluid. All right, which is part of the immune system and how it goes around the body. We clear out the, the intestines, we clear, clean the blood out, all the fluids, the cerebral spinal fluid gets cleaned out. I mean, all of it just reduces toxins. If and that's just the start. Yes. Hold that thought. <laughs> no, no, I just want to clarify for someone asking a question. Uh -huh. Yes, we are talking today about Qigong uh, and Tai Chi with uh -huh. our guest, uh, Master, Master uh, George Picard. We're not talking about the bio superfood supplement. I, we did introduce the, uh -huh. that's how we met. But I also have an, a question that's, uh, and an answer, but I'll let you answer that was fascinating to me was, uh, if you would, wouldn't mind sharing, there are so many forms of yoga, thousands of different schools now, or even Qigong, which is sometimes, can be not the real deal. Anybody can pick up a, a book and start teaching. I would like to share you to share what you've shared with me. What I've been, uh, what I've come to know, is uh, where does uh, your teacher come from, and her her teacher, and his teacher. Where does that come from in terms of the lineage pers lineage perspective? Okay. Well. Uh... First off, all Qigong is good, but not all Qigong is equal. They have Qigong for different things and organs and so on. So from a, a total body, total health, mind, body, spirit aspect, the 24 postures I've seen in, compared to other Qigong that I have done, and some I still do because he adjunct. But it started with a uh, great grandmaster, Wang Zipet. You can look at, now all these names you can look up online. This guy was the last great grandmaster in the last Chinese dynasty. He was in the, the uh, rebellion, Boxer Rebellion. He survived that. He became one of the greatest martial artists. He never lost a fight. Didn't like fighting, but he never lost a fight. Retired at 80. He said no more. Because if you're challenged in China and you refuse, you lose face. This was huge. And he was a great pa patriot of China. So what he did was he, he fought all international oncomers from Germany, England, Japan, America, and so on. Anybody who came to challenge the great fighter he fought them. He beat them all. Now, I'll give you a couple of little stories because I don't want to spend too much time on this. But one day, the, the Europeans really kind of raped China at the time. They were going in there, taking everything out, and they thought they were weak. I've been in Shanghai where they had the, the old colonial 
uh, area where it used to have uh, no dogs and Chinese allowed sign on, on the door, that kind of thing. So there was a, a group of Germans there. And in the temple, now, by the way, Wang Ziping was a Muslim. He was taught as a Muslim because it came through and converted them 200 years ago. He also studied, studied Christianity and he studied science and so on. He studied the Tao. One day they put this 350 pound rock in front of the temple door so they couldn't get in. So they sat back you know, like this and they laughed. And they couldn't figure, they figured they stopped. And Wang Ziping saw this. He walked over, he picked up this rock, carried it over, and dropped it on the ground. They were shocked. They'd never seen a man that strong. He became known as the thousand pound Wang, which is he was able to lift a thousand pounds. It doesn't surprise me because I, yesterday I watched a movie on Louis Sear from Quebec, the strongest oh, yeah. man in the world. It was fabulous. So I, now I can see it. I understand it as real. So, you know, little things. He jumped out of a six foot story building one day, landed on a moving bus, all designed, by the way, in broad daylight just to let the Chinese mafia know, don't mess with me. I'm opening my business, no extortion. Wasn't and, he, uh, uh, Georgia, also selected to be China uh, during the Mao reign, China's senior teacher for all of China? He was in the Wushu. But he, yeah. he from 1928 to 1935, he was in charge of all the Shaolin monasteries. Uh -huh. He was the master's master. And he, he taught in many of them. Travel was so difficult. He traveled around. He'd go to the monastery. You know, you have the, the master of the monastery, and he's a great guy. And he comes along, and he teaches them. That's This is amazing. There's some, I've come across six books on uh, Chinese martial arts where they credit all their teaching from Wang Ziping. Anyway, Wang Ziping got married and, and had a, a daughter, one child, Grandmaster Wang Zhirong. Now, Grandmaster Wang Zhirong was internationally known in competition. She won all the gold medals and so on in China and around. And if you take a look at the Tai Chi, the 24 uh, form, Yang style, she was a major in developing that form. Never got much credit for it because she's a woman. That's, that's what it was like in China, probably still is. So anyway, she traveled around the world in teaching and she settled eventually in the United States with her husband, Dr. Wu Chengdu, who was also uh, the grandmaster of Qigong and martial arts, and was the doctor of traditional Chinese medicine. When he was in China, he was a consultant as a doctor to a number of hospitals. And so was Wang Ziping. Well, Wu Chengdu developed a, a, a training ground for doctors of Chinese medicine and to treat people. He was head, Wang Ziping was a consultant of that. And Wang Ziping died in 93, back in 1989. Well, Wang Zhirong and Wu Chengdu had three daughters. The oldest is Helen Wu. Uh, Helen Wu is my direct teacher. So it's Grandmaster Helen Wu. And a very close friend of the family uh, was uh, Simon Yu, who was the master of all the major Kung Fu styles. Great in Qigong and so on. So they're both my teachers. Helen was my main teacher. Helen teaches at York University in, in Toronto, uh, credit system. And she's a doctor of Chinese medicine. And when I met her, my Tai Chi and my Qigong changed forever because they got the real deal. And I understood the understanding, the principles and energy and so on in, in complete difference. So I went to her for five years, private lessons every week. And I finally attained my fourth generation. So there's three generations of bloodline. Then I'm a fourth. Now there's other fourth generations, but I promised her years ago, I see if I'll get 24 posture up to the world. That's, that's going to be my job. I'll do the best I can. When I started teaching the 24 posture, that's when things changed. That's when people started to tell me, oh, my back doesn't hurt this and that. And I got involved in teaching individuals with cancer for years. Great results. Parkinson's, great results. Asthma, gone. MS. So all these things happened, and I kept reporting back to her. But that's the ladies that it came from. So 24 posture developed by, 20 posture originally developed by Wang Ziping. For in, in, in his book, and I have the book where it was published by the Chinese government, for treating disease and prolonging life. That's what it was developed for. And modern times, we say health, healing, and longevity. The health is obviously, if you have good health or think you have good health, keep it. This will help you keep it. If you have illness, this can get the body in a, in a homeostatic state so it can heal itself. And also longevity is being able to participate in life to the last breath. That is so important. That's what he meant from, from treating disease and prolonging life. 
So, uh, you know, with this particular lineage, I can't go wrong. And he developed it for the general population, for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're an athlete. One of my students is an Olympic medalist from Canada. And Roland, you introduced me to her. Oh, yeah. She yes. tried everything. You should yeah. try to, you Catherine. know, all kinds. Catherine, yeah. All different things. Yeah. So she. A gold Roland, medalist. Yeah. Yeah. Bronze, I, I want to yeah. say something, uh, George, about Chicago. One other thing that was so uh, attractive to me was that uh, coming from a yoga perspective, uh, you always need a mat and a special clothing to be loose to do on the floor, right? Yoga is on the floor, generally. Yeah. And uh, as, a, as a person who travels frequently during uh, at least uh, uh, the last 20 years all over the U.S. in a hotel room and so forth, what I found amazing with the 24 posture, they're all done standing up. You can do it in your regular clothing. You don't need to change. And eventually, by the way, if you learn them, uh, whether from Master Picard or from his videos, from his teaching, it's your self healing tool that you can carry with you and you can do it in the bathroom, standing up. <laughs> I've done it. It. Is, <laughs> it is so practical, you know, it's yeah. amazing. So anytime you need to recharge. Well, I also have the, I've taken the 24 posture and converted it also to a sitting form, which is quite powerful. So I've, I've done a v DVD on that. It's for instructors and for anybody who can't get up. I'm working with somebody now is, is COVID just starting and they can't stand up. They're two weeks. So sitting down, let's do this. And I've, we've modified some of the standing ones that from a seated position. But you're right. And, you know, the biggest thing is abdominal breathing. I mean, that, that's huge. You know, people don't, I mean, when was the last time people thought about the uh, visceral massage? What's that? You know, well, but a lot of people have bowel problems, constipation. They have uh, um, uh, uh, colon, colon issues. They have all kinds of, uh, let's see, what's, there's one in particular. I have one of my students, which has, uh, I can't recall. Anyway. What happens is their diet has to be very strict. And it, they can't take that to make lots of supplements because they can't absorb cheap. And with all these different diverticulitis, colitis, uh, ileitis, and so on, all bowels. So when you do a visceral massage, it, let's say we'll take constipation and diarrhea. The diaphragm is a dome. As you breathe deep, the dome goes down and it comes up like this as you breathe out. This is a visceral massage. And what happens is it's like taking your, like think of it as taking your magic fingers and put them on your organs and your spleen and your kidneys and your liver, you know, and, and, and uh, your pancreas, and small intestine, large intestine, and so on. All the bowels are down here. Above the diaphragm is your heart, pyocardium, and your lungs. All the rest of the are down here. So in, when you have your proper posture, then this relaxes, everything goes into position. When you have slow, deep breathing, just that alone is a visceral massage, things change. We've had people go from your chronic uh, constipation over 50 some years to no problem. Right? And part of it is just this. So put it to, as an example, if, I lift, if you just lean forward a little bit, you can feel your tummy tighten up. Now hold that position, try to take a deep breath, you can. Well, by doing Qigong in practice, you, you start to sit straighter, you stand straighter. My posture is, I notice it often when I'm just standing, hey, I'm standing straight, so, so the Qigong is postural corrected. Then there's specific exercises in there that actually work the bowel side to side. So we have that. Then we have the, the breathing and lung capacity and what's called the um, saturation point in the oxygen in the hemoglobin. So study just came out on a researcher uh, not long ago, actually, and I saw his presentation. And what they found was that uh, aerobic exercise and uh, like running, you get the oxygen in the blood cell that comes in and out, in and out, in and out. But when you're doing the slow deep breathing and slow movement exercise, the saturation in the blood cell is complete. Now, what does that show? The body is not hypoxic. So you can have a hypoxic place in the body. It could be the bowel, wherever. In a hypoxic state, things like candida, any fungus, and cancer cells can grow. They can't grow in oxygen. And they've known that since 1931. So if you have a hypoxic state in your body, this is where the cells can grow. 
However, if you have super saturation in the blood cells, it finds that the, the, it cleans out any hypoxic areas in the body because it saturates the entire body. So the chance of cancer cells to grow is next to impossible. Well, it can't grow in oxygen. And there's several studies like this in can, and cancer. And when I put it together, why my students did so well, where the cancer never came back, where they had full energy again, where things started to heal up and, and no evidence of disease. Uh, Continue to do the chair. Yes. I want to mention that you have worked locally here with post-cancer recovery teaching and helping people with cancer recover. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it's it started for a place called Wellspring Niagara, where I went in and I started doing a class once a week. That was twice a week. I was doing three classes a week. There's a waiting list for the class to go in. People just felt better. So I kept this on very and, and not understanding Chikung from a cancer standpoint, other than, hey, it helps heal the body. What else do I need to know? And they're starting to tell me some interesting things. Now, it wasn't just post. Most of them were in cancer treatment. So they're going through chemotherapy. They had had their surgeries. They had no hair, and they're coming in and sometimes had a, a, a pick, the pick in with the chemotherapy. But they started, and they modified the chikung, you know, because of the pick. And they did the deep breathing. And they kept going and they kept getting better and so on. So, and, and here they are 10, 14 years later, they're still alive. They say five years for cancer is considered a cure. These people, no evidence of disease. As a matter of fact, one of my students, Professor Pradano P. Klein, which I mentioned before, mm-hmm. uh, it's about 14 years ago, she was diagnosed. She had six weeks to six months to live. And this is from a major cancer center in, in Buffalo. So she said, so what do I do? And two oncologists told her, if you're going to heal this, you have to do this yourself. So she started coming into class. First half of the class, she'd sleep on the floor and no energy. Get up and do some of the Chicago. And then she'd do it here. She came here Saturday mornings and Wednesdays for the class here, to the other class that I had uh, you know, a few miles away at another location. And she slowly got better, slowly got better. So she lives in Florida now, golfs every day, retired. So you know, what's that all about? So she took the responsibility to heal herself. And this is the hardest thing to get across to people. You know, if you expect somebody else to fix you, you're going to get a rude awakening. It's all of who's responsible for your health, right? You are. I'm not. Other people aren't. The doctors aren't responsible for your health. They'll go in and they'll put you on a, a symptom management program. But if you want to heal yourself inside that, you're the person that does it. And there's, you know, I, I look at success and healing in four different pet categories. One is physical well being. So if you're in pain, or you're limping, or if your hip hurts, back hurts, whatever, that's not a success. Then the next is mental growth. I mean, you have to keep your mind growing and growing and growing. The third thing is emotional balance. People get so stressed out, road rage, this kind of stuff. But, you know, they come home and when we're stressed out, again, I mentioned when you're in stress, the blood cells move from the viscera to the extremities for fight or flight. That's your sympathetic nervous system. It also goes from the frontal lobe back to the reactive brain at the back. And what happens is you don't think when you're angry. So in a relationship, somebody says something, you react just like that, and you say things that you were dead said. And you know, you calm down later when you, the stress goes away. That doesn't happen so much when you do the chicken. But all these things, so you got physical well-being, mental growth, emotional balance, to a spiritual understanding. Spiritual we're energy, right? We're spirit. We're spiritual beings having a physical experience. Experience you can look at it that way. So if you have balance in all four, you have physical well-being, no pain, you're happy. Mental growth, you're learning constantly. You can't just stop learning at some point in time. And if you have emotional balance, to a spiritual understanding, and one more thing, family, life, and fun. That's where true health and wellness is. There's a difference between fitness and wellness, by the way. And that's where the wellness comes in. Does that make sense? Uh, Sifu, I have a couple of questions. Go ahead. One is a sort of a, where are we going with this? I will answer that one. The, the purpose of uh, Sifu Picard and I getting together is we meet frequently, at least on a weekly basis. I take classes from him. And we just thought of, uh, we both have a family of our clients, of our students, 
uh, in the thousands, in the many thousands, and we thought we would get together for us to share the benefit of Qigong and certainly to promote uh, online classes, which are now available with uh, Sifu Picard, which is uh, due to COVID and, and traveling and all that is very practical. It's very inexpensive as far as I know. And by the way, once you <laughs> learn Qigong and you master it, on your own at home, then you have it for life. It's not a lost proposition. Someone was asking what our, our intention was. So my intention is to pass on wellness and tools for self-healing, just like our bio superfood. Once you know how to use it, it's yours. Uh, that was one question. The other one uh, was, um, let me uh, go back here. Thank you. Well, I can't find, oh yeah. I think it's uh, to the point of where you were going at with Qigong. Does Qigong uh, have any benefits for uh, memory, uh, for long-term uh, brain health? Well, there's a lot of studies. <laughs> I'm at the age now where I start forgetting words when I go, they come to me a few minutes later. But overall, uh, I teach an Alzheimer's group twice a week online. Before this COVID shutdown, we taught there for six years. And now we've been going another six months. They wanted it back. Then we showed research on cognitive function for people with Alzheimer's or dementia and how that works in the brain. So the, the short answer is yes. And we have all kinds of studies. Too. There's over 30 studies that we quoted for the Alzheimer's Society. But the bottom line is, they just like it. They feel better when they do it. You know, so I come on and look forward every Tuesday and, or pardon me, Monday and Thursday afternoon at one o'clock and they're on. And we've been doing that. I've been doing that with them again for six months. So I hope that answers your question. There's all kinds of studies. Yes, increases cognitive functioning and so on. That was an email question I received before our talk. So there's oh. other questions uh, that are coming up. Yeah. Uh, at some point uh, shortly, uh, we'll open up for live questions. What do you think, Sifu? Absolutely, yeah, you, absolutely. Because we, you can talk. I know you could talk till, <laughs> till the sky <laughs> it turns blue. Uh, yeah, and give I, me I, one, uh, one simple talk topic I can go on. I, I've had, I yes, tend to be a little verbose at times, but I just to make one short comment about you know where are we going with this. You know, unless people know about it, how can they use it and improve their health? So this is just information. Hopefully the information is enough for you to look further into it. We can't tell you everything about the medical things and about Chicago. So it's up to the individual. So those who need to or attract to this will find out the information. And then from there, you're on your own self-healing journey. So that's why we're here is just to inform. Nothing more. Great. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, the, the website is the Village of Healing and Wellness or georgepicard.com uh, to sign up or to get a book. He wrote uh, a great book about uh, his story and this particular Qigong lineage. Uh, you can also get uh, the actual 24 posture video training, uh, self-training. Uh, so there's lots of tools that you can find if you hook up on his website. All right, what I'd like to do is uh, open up for live questions, if any, or any of the questions that could be in the, in the chat box. So if anyone would like to ask questions about any of this, please unmute yourself and come on on. Or, or, or comments, you're welcome. This is a conversation. I heard someone. <laughs> That's me, maybe. Peter. Is that oh, Peter? was that Peter? Did you get on there first? No, go ahead. Well, uh, a quick question. Uh, you talked about the meditation aspects of it. Uh, do you incorporate any special kind of breathing as you do your practice? Oh, absolutely. It's diaphragmatic breathing, basic natural breathing. In Chinese, it's called natural breathing, which means you breathe through into the abdomen. So 
in through the nose and out through the nose. Some go in through the nose, out through the mouth. This one is in and out through the nose. It's slow control, controlled breathing. Nose and mouth. No, no, nose and nose. In, in out. out. Okay. Yeah. And, and the other thing from a serious significant energy level is that the tip of the tongue is on the roof of the mouth. And then as you do this, this connects what's called the governing and conception vessels together. One goes up the front, one goes up the back. It improves your balance, which I've often demonstrated. And it connects two major curious meridians that actually help balance the other meridians. The a little more other, going, you know? <laughs> other dimension, uh, Kent, a uh, great, great question is, as you do the 24 posture, it's uh, typically you'll do minimum three up to 20 repetition of each of the 24, by the way. So you can gauge your time. But by doing them, you have no choice but to breathe. And, and uh, as you enter into the practice, uh, 10 minutes into it, you're already in a meditative state and it just grows and grows. And your brain stops thinking because you have to do those exercises. You have to remember them. And at the end of it, what's nice is you sit and you meditate for 10 minutes, however you wish, a uh, half hour, and you're in the zone right away. You, you have cranked, you have prepared yourself for a better sitting meditation. So it's a win-win, it's a if that yeah, answers the question. One of the um, practitioners I've worked with for a long time recommends sort of pushing your stomach out to pull your breathing down and really work your diaphragm as you do that. Is there anything that you do in that area to really encourage yourself to do full breathing? Relax your abdominal muscles. To push isn't always good. You know, in the West, we like the extreme. Uh, in Chicago, uh, less okay. is more. So if you learn to relax the abdominal muscles, you can take slow, deep breath in. But here's what happens. If you were to sit and take a deep breath, chances are, not judging chance are you can see this watch your shoulders that's not yeah that's not should diaphragmatic go. breathing you should all have it up here down below exactly so again watch my shoulders hold deep breath it'll move this takes time this is where you hold your stress so when you start breathing this way you start relaxing the muscles and you clean increase your oxygen it, it helps balance the co2 and o2 carbon dioxide and so on because you don't breathe <laughs> this may sound strange you don't breathe to take in oxygen you breathe to get rid of carbon dioxide that's the poison get the idea so you need a good balance because both are necessary yeah, i read a i read a, a book if you're all welcome to get it it's called breath <laughs> and <laughs> it teaches all that about expelling is a, is is the name of the game and nothing forceful and so forth Peter. Yes, I, you know, I'm so grateful to be here and, and hear both of you. And it's, you know, it's, I think everybody online with us, uh, you wouldn't, nobody would be here. If they couldn't really appreciate how much this means and how valuable your contribution is. And, and uh, for the, um, for, I don't, I don't, um, I, I'm used to my, Sensei being Sensei, and you have a different name for it. Uh, mm -hmm. right, I'm, I'm so glad to hear from you. I, I wanted to um, show you something because I had I used to have a friend in New York who's passed on, who was highly spiritual, he was a spiritual master, and had a big following, and he did uh, weightlifting, and uh, amazing things like uh, you know I can hold this up to the camera, but this is a one arm lift of 7,000 pounds. And, um, <laughs> and while he, he did this, he was surrounded by world-class weightlifters. So it was, he, you know, he, he had a big following around the world and uh, he could do some things that were remarkable. And um, I really, and he was a good friend of mine and it was amazing to watch him because it was all about chi, it was all about energy and it wasn't about strength. He, uh, you know, he wasn't a big guy, he, but he could do things because of chi that uh, very few people could do. Peter, well, the only I gotta say something. Peter, please share your tender age with us. 
and tender. that you're still running. Well, I'm, I'm in my 80th year. year. I'm, I'm 79. <laughs> your yeah. energy. Yeah. Well, thank you. I No, I'm proud of uh, holding my age pretty well. <laughs> but then again, <laughs> I um, uh, I've been taking bio superfood for how many years? <laughs> uh, 15, 60 more. Yeah. That's before when I lived yeah. in Colorado. Yeah. Wow. Well, I bet you can't believe how old people your age are. <laughs> right, Peter? How old? Oh, I know. It's, I, yeah, yeah, I can't believe old. <laughs> I can't believe how old people my age are. Oh, yeah, they're we, ancient. Yeah. In no. the same age, years. It's, it's about energy. Okay, somebody, yeah, somebody asked a question, uh, Ron, I've got it written down here. Uh, can you give an example? Partic participants with varying degrees of Parkinson's. Absolutely. Now, I've had several people with Parkinson's. There's, like I say, there's over uh, 30, I don't know, many, many studies, uh, randomized, peer-reviewed studies. Parkinson's, what happens when they start doing Chicago, what I've noticed with people in my class, the tremors stop. One fellow told me after a few classes, a few weeks, he says, because he walked across the street, he lived across the street from my school. He said, when I used to walk, my hands were at my side, they didn't move. Now I'm fine, I'm walking and my arms are moving. He says, I don't have the same, same tremors and so on. So it's highly recommended as a treatment for Parkinson's. But here's the thing. My famous, my favorite saying, which is not mine, but I like to make it mine, is you can't learn without experience, right? So I can teach all kinds of things. And you can, what we're doing, all we're talking about here right now is commentary. And we're talking about all these, these great studies, the one that's done for this person, one that's done for the per person. If you've never done Chicago before, it's just a bunch of hot air, perhaps. So you need the experience. When you do the experience, like same with superfood, you take the product or you do the chicken, and now you know the truth. It's really that simple. So for people to understand what we're doing, so are you. So you do it for 30 days. You know, how long does it take to do 24 posture chicken? You can do it in 20 minutes. My first DVD, I did it in 17 and a half minutes. I thought it was slow. In fact, Roland was the one, he got his little camera and we went out to, to a park Early in the morning, it's five thirty one morning. He put his camera down there, and he stood there, and he held up the signs to make sure I got the names right. And we—that was my very first DVD. Second one was a little more professional. Now the one we're working on now is high end. It's it's uh, downloadable. Anyway, so that's what you have to do. You have to practice something and learn it. So if somebody has Parkinson's disease, this look up the research if you want. Still commentary until you do it. Once you do it, you'll get the benefits. If you don't do it, well, what can I say? Yeah. Okay, how long is it? Oh. And, okay, I've got, I, I've got a couple of questions here. So uh, how long is the, the 24 routine? I need something that is concise, concentrated, to be able to stay dedicated on a daily basis. Doing 20 minutes, 25 minutes. It, it goes like this. It's better to do it than not do it. It's better to do it longer than shorter. So what happens to many people is they say, yeah, I need this concise thing. You know? I need, so they do it and I start feeling better. So the next thing you know, their 20 minute routine turns into 30 minutes and they just love it. And that may be your experience, but I can tell you this, if you do it, the 24 postures in a 20 minute period, you do it every day for 30 days, you will be shocked. I, I, second, I second that. Yeah. yeah. We, have, we, we don't understand how powerful the body is. You know, and when do we move in certain ways to expand the lungs and stretch the posture and so on? That's why there's 24 postures. It starts here. It goes all the way down. It relaxes every muscle in the body so that the energy can flow, so that the blood can flow. Blood and energy are like this. Chi, I'm talking about. So, I mean, there's there's simple exercises you can do to prove that uh, and, uh, chi exists. But. Many of the exercises are of a spiral form. And you, maybe you can talk about that. What happens when you apply this pressure to the spine? Yeah. From the bottom well, up. Well, you, you know, you've got the uh, cerebral spinal fluid. There it goes. You've got the articular surface that go like the partners between each uh, spine or the, each vertebrae. Disc. Vertebrae, thank you. So when you start moving, it's like this, and you move it like this in different ways. You stretch it up vertically. Of course, your your posture straightens out. 
and then when it straightens out, everything's moving properly, and on you go. And uh, you'll notice that I've had people that have had one of my students had spinal stenosis, and thank you, had spinal stenosis, was collapsing two to three times a day. You can see here your story it's on our website. I put some video testimonials up there, and it, the doctor said you'd be in a wheelchair in two years. That was about fourteen years ago. Hasn't uh-huh. collapsed since. Yeah. So he started doing it, and I told him what happened. His spine, if I can see if I can, his spine instead of being straight was like this. So the nerve inside was touching the bone and causing him to short out, in other words, collapse. The legs just went dead. Once we started to spread the spine like this, by doing these exercises, that never happened again. We've had scoliosis where, you know, they had some, uh, went for day surgery, and went up in the hospital for 30 days, constant pain, injections for pain. After, you know, a month of doing Chicago, now they're out teaching, they're back to work, they're doing all kinds of things. We have the stories. So if you go to the website, georgepicard.com, go to those little three lines in the top right corner, click on them and go down and, and learn more. You can see it all there. Okay. Technique or posture that helps reduce a fever. Well, it's not so much the posture itself. It's, it's the breathing that's going to help reduce the fever. See, fever is part of your immune system. What a fever is for is to generally have a viral infection and it heats the body up and the heat is to kill the virus. So fever is a good thing unless it's too high. So it's slow, deep breathing. Just slow, deep breathing. You, you can sit. You don't even have to do a posture. Uh, what I would do is we have the first posture where you put your hands like this on your lower abdomen and just relax. Close your eyes and slow, deep breathe. That would, uh, that would help. And let's see what else we have. Here. <laughs> Why not show them a short one? Oh, I know it was one of those students out there that did that. I don't have my fancy schmancy clothes on, but I can do that. Can I do that? Let's see if I can do. Hmm. I'm going to show you two postures that are from Wang Ping. They're not part of the 24 posture, but it's generally a warm up. And I'm going to do these two really simple, really quick things so you can experience something. Sound good? All right. Pardon me. Okay. I stand back in my spot. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to work on the, the conception vessel, which goes from the, the anus all the way up the front to inside the front lip. The governing vessel goes from the anus all the way straight up the spine, right across to the top of the lip here, just on the inside. And we're going to put our tongue on the roof of the mouth. Right? That's going to connect the two. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fingers, I'm going to lift them up like this, I'm going to by my side, feet shoulder width apart, I'm going to push down. At the same time, I'm going to stand as tall as I can, which means the chin comes in, exposed to the bakhvi point, also known as the crown chakra in other cultures. And so just get a sense of how your body feels now. Okay. Fingers up, you're going to push down. Ready? Breathe in. Stand as tall as you can, push down and hold your breath. Breathe out, relax, bend your knees, and breathe. Feel a difference? We're gonna do that one more time, real quick. Breathe in. Push up and hold your breath. Breathe out, bend the knees. Arms up, breathe in. And just stand there for a second, eyes closed. Feel a difference in your body? One more. These really affect change. So I'm going to clasp my fingers like this behind. I'm going to look up. And I'm going to pull my hands back as far as I can go. Breathe in. Look up. Hold. Breathe out. Relax. Breathe in. Now breathe in. Feel your body float. And we'll just do one for time. We usually we do two. And you can feel the change happening inside your body. It's energetic. It's all the energy moving up that you're feeling. There's another simple thing you can try. The Sometimes the more I say, the more I have to say, but I'll try to keep it simple. You have 12 organ meridians. They start at the feet and they end at the feet, toes actually. So your yin organs come up all the way. They're all connected inside with each other and so on. And they go up and then the, all the yang organs go down the back and the side of the legs. And that's how the cycle goes. So you have your liver, you have your kidneys, and you have your spleen, three yin organs. They come up, 
connect to the arm and go to the fingertips here. This is all yib, front. Yang is at the back. And then from here, you have your heart, you have your pericardium, and you have your lungs. That's six yin readings. Yang readings, again, go from the opposite side of the fingernails at the back of the hand, and they flow all the way down the back and the sides, again, to your toes. That cycle takes 24 hours to go from the end down to yang. However, in the center of the, or the, the seam of the wrists and the ankles, you have what's called source points. Now we're getting into self-healing acupressure, but that's as far as I'll go in this. If I take my hands like this, and I lift the fingers, so just keep your hands like this, relax, all right? Pay attention to your fingers, now slowly raise them up. Feel the difference in your fingers? Mind quiver gets the chi. I'm gonna assume there's a yes, and if you don't, that's okay, try it again. There's a difference when this, this opens up the energy of the chi to the fingertips. That's why the wrists are important, okay? So all these things, uh, I mean, there's some things we can do. I'll give you one, tell you what, I'm gonna give you one for the heart. I asked my teacher one time, he was showing me this, I said, well, I don't have a heart problem. He says, ah, everybody has a heart problem. <laughs> and the only difference is one in degree. So I'm gonna take my left arm and I take my fingers. Now, this is called kun or chun, depending on the pronunciation in Chinese, part of Chinese medicine, I'm going to make a measurement. So I take four fingers here from the seam, see the seam of the wrist, and down. And then from that point, I'm going to add three more fingers. Got it? And then right where this these third finger ends, I'm going to put my thumb like this. And I'm going to do this. And you turn it towards yourself, nice and easy, just so. Do it every day. And he said to me, he says, you do this every day so that you wake up in the morning. It's an then down, there's an emergency point. It's called a cleft point. It's an emergency point. And so if you feel you, anything in your left arm or so on, four, three, put the thumb on there and start doing this. Don't do this. It's nice and slow. That's a connection to the pericardium. See, this is a pericardium radio. Pericardium is a muscle around the heart. And when the muscle's around the heart, that's what actually controls the heart itself. The heart meridian is more for most. So hope that was quick enough. Any more questions? So one of the... There's a technical question in the chat. Yep. Uh, my question is, if we join on the video classes, do we go through the 24 postures every time? And if you do the video classes, the only way I can do, this person said, do you have access to them every day so that uh, we can view it again? Or is yes. it only a few times a week? Yes. No, yes. Yes or yes. I teach, I teach uh, Tuesdays and Thursday evenings at 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Now, I know for Rachel in England, she gets it obviously much later. So when you sign up for that, you also get the videos. All right. So you get the videos for the month that you're in and for the previous month after you start. And then we have these on an ongoing basis. So each month you get those. So if you haven't seen them before, it's live to you. All right. That's my perception of it. But it's and from a cost standpoint, it's 50 bucks. Nine classes a month plus the videos for 50 bucks. I mean, we do. I. I mean, people doing yoga class, it's $20, $25 an hour. But anyway, that's here or there. The point is, we want to get it out to as many people as we can. And then again, how, how do you know the truth? The truth can't be taught. It must be learned. Experience. So, yeah. it, it's only experience. You've learned nothing new until you have a new learned result. The rest is just commentary. Uh, there were, uh, there's questions about the recording and so forth. This, uh -huh. this, this talk is recorded. Uh, ask for it. We will email you the link so you can download it. You can watch it again. You can ask questions about what has been shared. Uh, another question, which is a plug for me or for Bio Superfood. What is Bio Superfood? Where do we learn more? Where do we get it? Our website is bioage.com, B-I-O-A-G-E.com, and you'll get all the information there and just send us an email. Trust me, it's good stuff. Um, uh, Roland, could I yes. add something? Yes, Linda. Yes. 
I also have met George the same time as Roland. And um, I have done Qigong and Tai Chi with George. And I find a little bit of, about my background is I have done yoga since in the 70s and always try to stay on top of whatever new workout exercise were coming out. So, uh, aerobics, steps, uh, you name it, elastic band. And the one that I enjoyed the most was doing the Tai Chi and Qigong. I always come back to it. I find it brings us, to, um, brings us back to the present moment. As you're doing the exercises, you're breathing, you're in, you're in contact with your body and your mind, and it relaxes you. I also find that for me, it has helped with my balance. It has helped with uh, my focus. And it's just a pleasant way of spending 30 minutes or 40 minutes or even less to meditate. It's like a movement meditation, which um, as Roland and as George have mentioned and described, it's so good for our health. We don't realize the benefits unless we try it. So I just wanted to add that and I appreciate- Thank the, you so much. I appreciate your um, discussion today, George and Roland. Uh, you know, I, uh, when I first learned about Qigong and Tai Chi, I would have been the best salesperson because You're doing I, a pretty good job now. I spoke to everybody. This is what, 15 years ago, 14 years ago. Yeah. And uh, we attended seminars with George and we met the, uh, uh, who's the Helen, your leader? Yeah. She Helen. Did, she did Helen, Helen, yes, we met her and it's beautiful watching her doing the movements and the, all the position. Um, it's, it's interesting. So for me, I thank George a lot because um, it's, I occasionally forget to do my exercises, but when I feel I need, I'm stressed and I need to unwind, this is where I go to. I go in the room, I close, you know, everything is closed. You do this in silence and you just go through all the movements, you focus and it works every single inch of your body, not just one part. So thank you, George. Oh, thanks. I mean, that was great. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate that. Um, oh, no problem. My, there's, my pleasure. There's, I benefit from it. <laughs> oh, good. There's a, a couple of things about awareness that we all, you know, people talk about increase your consciousness. You all want to achieve higher consciousness and so on. Well, that's not really consciousness by definition is thinking. So you can think at a higher level and think at a higher level. It's still a conscious act. It's not a spiritual act. It's a conscious act. When you understand awareness, when you're doing the Chikang, the whole idea is not to think, it's to feel. And the more, it, I mean, this takes a little practice. So when you start to do some of the breathing that you're doing and some of the exercise that you're doing, just feel the body as you're going through. You know, what's happening here? Is what have any pain here? What does this muscle feel like and again it's not like you're thinking those words it's just you're sensing them or feeling them that's really where higher, higher consciousness comes in which is awareness right? i'm trying so, uh, george to your point uh when i when i do the routine sometimes i lose myself i don't even know which which one which exercise is next i just disconnect that, completely from the mental that, that happens when i teach sometimes <laughs> i realize afterwards that did i do three postures or five I don't know. Did I miss a posture? You know, because when I teach, I don't stand there and talk. I, it, you know, because basically it's, you can't do these postures wrong, but you can do them better. And that takes over time. And I explain it from time to time, the postures and different things, but just follow along. Just do it. Just breathe and do the postures and you'll have your experience. But I did get uh, a couple of questions here. One is about information on cancer. So any specific learning about uh, Chicago cancer? Well, uh, if you go to our website, uh, there was a paper written by uh, Professor Penelope Klein and another professor on Chicago cancer care. She, she thought this would be her opus because we became very good friends. And every Saturday she'd come to class, I'd cook breakfast and we'd talk for two, three hours. So she decided 
when she, after she'd gone through this cancer ordeal, to give something back. What she did is she put together a short video. And it's a 30 minute video. And it's on YouTube. And it's free. It's called uh, Cultivating Life Energy. And you can go to Chicago and Cancer Care. So she produced this mini documentary, won five awards, uh, Telly Awards, what they were, but it won five awards. And what she did is she interviewed uh, a number of my students. She interviewed a student from the United States and a couple from Australia. She flew around and she did this all on her own, you know, her, her own financing and whatnot, because she wanted to give something back because of what it did for her. And most of the students had done 24 posture Chicago, several hadn't. But like I say, Chicago, when it gets down to the breathing, which is the most important thing in cancer, that's really where it's at. But there is a study that she put together, a meta-analysis, and you can get that on her website. Uh, there's other... Uh, see and cancer oh there's a number of actual um studies and so on we can get them for you though you see chinese the chinese people are very pragmatic we are more logical we're, we want to know they say listen we're going to do if it works i'm going to do it if it doesn't work i'm going to stop doing it that makes the most sense in the West, I know we need study after study. So 3,000 studies, uh, just about every disease that's out there. Doesn't matter what it is. MS, Parkinson's, cancer, diabetes, uh, uh, back pain, spouse, irrelevant. These 24 postures work the, the body. So you have the different things. But we still need more studies. So one of the blog I wrote once, you know, here's the, I think it's a 2,500 study. How many more fun studies do you need before you take action? Right? One, two. And then the rest, you do, I mean, people say, I don't have time for Chicago. You got time to watch TV, sit down, read a newspaper, drive to work, or whatever. But we'll spend so much money on other things and less on our health that you know, we have to change your thinking perhaps. And uh, when that happens, things start happening to you. It's like uh, <laughs> Chicago becomes effective as soon as you do. George, I can't... there's a great question here. Someone says uh, they have COPD. They have difficulty getting uh, enough air. Yes. Okay. Here's what you can do. Again, I just read a study on this today. It's on our website. So it's under, if you go to georgepicard.com, you know, you click those little three bars in the top right corner, Press that, you go down to learn more, and then you press research. That'll take you right to this. You can follow a number of studies that we posted. And then if you go down about five or six, you're going to find a study, one of several done on COVID-19, which is a respiratory disease. And you read that whole study. You can click on it to get the whole thing. You got the abstract, the method, the, it, it's just, and they talk about COPD in particular and how it increases the muscle strength and your intake. So absolutely. And that's not the only study that just happened to be in there with everything else. Thank you. There's not a study we can't do. Uh, uh, relief from sleep apnea. Yes, that's shown. What happens is when you, when you, when you do the Qigong and you become energetic, you become energized and you also become balanced. So at sleep time, it's sleep time. Well, it's not sleep time, it's not sleep time. And again, this is not something you, it's, listen, some people have amazing instant response, no question. But generally speaking, you start you start feeling better and then you track it as you go along. A lot of times, you know, we have these issues that we've had for so long, we're just, you're just there. And people start doing the Chikung and three weeks later, say, you know, I've had that pain in my side for 20 years, it's gone. You know, in one of our, one of my favorite stories is a gal named Margaret Little, who's one of my students, one of my instructors. Severe, severe rheumatoid arthritis. Deformed fingers and knuckles and, and ribs and shoulders and so on. She's on absolutely no medication. She's pain free. So is she helping with, the, with the, the energy through the fingers and through the bone? Absolutely. But this guy, she's a professor at Queen's University in, in Kingston, Ontario. She knows her stuff. And that was the lady who had chronic constipation since she was eight years old, hospitalized for it, drinking glasses of milk and magnesium. This is her story. 
You should see her there. And she teaches. <laughs> she's, got, she's got a following of loyal students. They do it outside, rain, snow, or shine. We got pictures of it. They're called Snows and Chicago Warriors. So if it can happen on something that severe, it can in the body, it can happen on anything in the body. So yes, will it help? Yes, doing nothing won't help. And oftentimes people will prefer to take the pill, which is which is treating the symptom instead of doing something naturally that they, they have total power to do. Total power. And again, anybody said, what, what do they got to lose? So you try it for 30 days. Which I, you know, we've had people, like Roland has, has had people where they, you know, because of bio superfood, you don't, you don't have to do the vitamin C and this and everything. You need to talk to that anytime. But it's just, just do it. Simplify it. Get something that really, really high quality and works. I still take it. So uh, a couple more questions coming in. I like answering questions. So there are points. So there are points. Somebody asked about breathing and radium points. Just, this is, this is the, uh, the inside, the hand. This is the yang side, all right? Yin, this is the lung. The thumb is the lung. So it comes from the thumbnail on the inside here, goes down along, all right? There's a source point right where the lung part is, right in here. Take that and massage that, all right? Then the other one is, as it goes up, where the joint is, where the elbow is here, if I go on the inside of the outside of the arm, if that makes sense, here's the outside, right in the joint, right here. Get that spot and massage. Now, what will happen is you're going to have these spots, certain spots along these different meridians are going to be sore. Some of you touch and go, yow. That's the body telling you this is a problem. What you do in acupressure is you take that spot that's, that's you know, is tender and you gently massage it. And you just do it for a couple of minutes. And eventually that goes away. And what happens is, according to Chinese medicine, that this, the body we're producing has its own pharmacy it will produce what it needs. And that's how you tell you, you go right up the line. And, you know, you'll have two or three that are fine. You'll hit one, ouch. Okay. I'll tell you another one, which is important in today's age, is diabetes. This works extremely well in diabetes, but the spleen line, oh, geez, okay, sure. You've got your shin bone, all right? I mean, your, your shin bone along here, just on the inside of the knee, on the interior side of the leg is your spleen point. There's spleen nine, four fingers down is seven, or eight, four fingers down is, is seven, then four fingers down is six. And you run the thumb down these, I'm gonna have to do another workshop on this, but you run it down and you sit there and you do both sides. You can't even see me, I'm sitting. And that's how you work and that, that lowers your sugar. There's also points on the spleen because of the, I'm gonna get into too, too much detail here. Uh, okay. Let me stand closer. Somebody asked me. So here's the elbow here in the back. But see the joint? Look, see this joint here? All right. So this is the, the inside, the inside. And over here on the other end, where the thumb is, the side where the thumb, the side where the thumb is down here, just to the joint, put your thumb in there. It's hard to show in here and feel that. That's a lung point. All right. Right in there. And massage it. That sore massage out. You got a source point, which is right here, all right? Just massage that, just like that. And you can also go six fingers from here and two and massage this. So it's just on the inside where the bone is and add to that. And then a workshop a while ago on, on uh, self-healing acupressure. I mean, there's, there's spots for so um, this. Thing. On that heart point that you just pointed to, is that says lung, is, lung point? It's a lung point. Lung point. This one? Yeah. Oh, I thought that was heart. Yeah. Okay. No, hearts. This is your heart line. It's on the baby finger on the inside. That's heart. Okay. So, heart over here, this would be heart. This is lung in the thumb. Pericardium right. is right center. So, the major energy center, the Lao Gong point here, is pericardium eight. It goes up to the fingernail, just on the side of the fingernail. That's pericardium nine. They go by numbers in the West and Chinese. Every point has an actual name and a meaning. Mm -hmm. and so I don't the know idea to, to just work your way down until you find something that doesn't, that's a little bit tender oh. and then massage <laughs> it. <laughs> well, well, you know, 
that's the uh, how can they say it? the Bushman's way. No, there's going to be something wrong here somewhere. But yeah, you actually right. have to <laughs> once you know because there's there's five major points on each meridian of the twelve meridians, and there's a beginning and ending point. There's a cleft point. There's a source point, and there's okay. a connection point. All right, and they're all things. So what happens is, generally speaking, in acupuncture, if you have a, a an issue in the lower body, they uh, needle the upper body. If you have an issue in the upper body, they'll needle the lower body. So acupressure is a little bit different. It's it's we're still working the radiance and energy, but some of the understanding we we know that the body can create its own pharmacy. It can create what's needed, but we have to release it in the body. Wow. Makes sense, okay. and that's where the acupressure. I, I mean, it's right. not. Question, uh, George, so on, uh, I think it's an important question. Uh, it's about, uh, there's, well, I read a book called The Body Keeps the Score, but the question is, uh, can it release, help release trauma, which is stored in the body? For example, with C, uh, CPD, PTSD, CPD, or complex PTSD, which huh? is a, a variant of PTSD. Where there's some of the veterans associations down in the United States, the different ones are using different techniques. They found that the Chicago works extremely well. Uh, Professor Klein through Juvenile College in Buffalo, New York, wanted to get this to a large group of uh, veteran associations, veterans. Anyway, that some other system came out in, in not Chicago, but told them we're going to do this one. Problem with Chicago is nobody knows what, what kind of word that is, but the answer is absolutely. Because it's, it's meditation, and as you meditate, you, you think differently when you, when you do the chikang. That's just, it's just something you experience. And then as you start doing that, you start releasing. And then it's not, you know, it, it helps you become not a participant in the stressor, but a watcher of the stressor, you know, something from distance, an observer as opposed to a participant. And that part of it, you help that go. So yeah, it's been doing really well. Um, yeah. As far as Chikung and Cancer, one more thing is that the 24 posture Chikung is perfect for it. Uh, okay, on day 18 of 30 day challenge, my knees are feeling, oh, my knees are feeling so much better. Question, I had a benign brain tumor, uh, lost left side of my face, gained some nerve, uh, function uh, back and wonder if this can benefit my facial left eye and nerves. All healing, regardless of how difficult or impossible it may be, is possible. So along with the, the Chikung, you get into that relaxed state. And to put it a different way, you have to understand creation, how that works. But what the mind can conceive and believe it will achieve. Think that through. So there's different mantras that you can do. In, in words are energy, right? And what happened is uh, Professor Emoto out of Japan did a, a study where he put different, uh, he took water out of a polluted lake and he put some of the water in different Petri dishes and he put a label on it and he wrote on it. And he had people come through. This was an experiment. I want you to come do it. I just want you to look at each Petri dish and read the label. So they did. So they love, hate, joy, peace, stupid. And it went like this. So he had a bunch of positive and negative words. Then he took that same water from, the water from each Petri dish, which came from the same jug, and froze it to minus 30 degrees centigrade. Then he brought it, brought it back up to minus 5 centigrade and did slices. And they looked at the water, which at this point is crystalline, under the magnifying, magnifying glass. All the ones that were positive had these beautiful crystalline uh, shapes and so on, all different in each word. And then all the ones that were negative were ugly and malformed and so on. Same water, repeated over and over again. Now, there was a professor in university in Germany who repeated exactly the same thing. Words are energy and they are power. There's no space, place, or time that energy does not flow. And this is this. It's no different than you're thinking about somebody you haven't talked to in a while and the phone rings, it's them. I'm sure we've all had that experience at some point in time. And I used to find when long distance was expensive, I used to sit and meditate on somebody. And sure enough, then a couple of days they'd call me, save my dime. <laughs> <laughs> it's resolved. 
That is true. Sorry. But, you know, we have to understand that I'm big on saying one thing, and I'll say it to you. Have I told you how much I love you today? And that was one of the things I actually learned that through my cancer students, where I was doing muscle testing. I don't know if you understand that. It's the energy of the body. So if you know how to do muscle testing and have the right set, then I'd, I'd have them think of their cancer and their body goes completely weak like this. I can also measure with rods. And as you put your arm up, I'd say, have I told you much? I'd love you today. It's almost like you could sit on the arm. And I'd say, think of what makes you sad. <sighs> have I told you much? I love you today. Same thing. Words, power, and energy. So what I've learned to do, and this is for my own personal thing, I recommend. When somebody cuts me off on the road, for example, or pulls in front of me, or goes faster, <sharp inhale> skips in. I don't know about you, but as I drive, that makes me angry. So I've learned to stop, laugh, and say, have I told you much I love you today? And not only do I feel better, but the energy doesn't come from me. It comes through me. So if I have a negative thought about somebody, believe me, it's not good for your health. Because what you say negative about somebody else, it's actually affecting you at the same time. Now, I've shown this in class many times, how that works. So if you have something positive to say about somebody, say it. It actually builds you up. And that person has no consciousness that that's happening. But it's happening. He gets that energy. Sifu. So, yes. Sifu, have I told you how much I love you today? I believe you just did. I, uh, I will need to wrap up in five minutes because I have an appointment. Uh, <laughs> later on. You, Linda, I, I could leave it on. I could leave it going <laughs> because, you know, we had... 58 people since the beginning of the talk. Nobody's leaving. Yeah. I uh -huh. love it. Uh, I could leave it on, but I don't want to lose the opportunity of saving the recording or, or the chat. Uh, okay. All right. So uh, let's think of this. If the people that are on want to continue on, see, I, I didn't plan any of this. What I'm going to say, it's on. We just sat down. You started. And I, I just let it come out. So in the beginning, you know, I kind of rambled a little bit. But if we target specific illnesses or people send them their questions way ahead of time, if they want to do this again, we can do this again. Absolutely. Okay? Because then we'll bring up more things. I we'll love the questions. A, we'll do a Q and A next time. Or uh, yeah, we just, I, I, I'd like to bring on uh, Dr. Joe Baumgart. How about if we did, uh, we did the 24 postures together? <laughs> well, there's, there's something for you. You want to know? Do it. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, we'll adjourn. We'll we'll uh, we'll be open for questions by email. Uh, everything uh -huh. in the chat will be preserved, and I'll I'll send the recording to anyone requesting it. Okay. And we'll see uh, the the desire for uh, another session. Sure. Could you could you leave this on for a little bit as you leave, like five minutes? The issue is I have five minutes now, yeah. But after okay. that, it's, I don't want to lose the recording. Because I, okay. uh, I have to close just, the meeting to save the recording. Okay. If, if anybody has a, a question after the fact, they can email, email me, george at georgepicard.com, and ask questions. I'm glad to answer. If you put in your phone number, I'm glad to call you and discuss some things. Particularly, You may have things of a personal nature that I don't know that you might want to ask and not in an open forum. So I welcome that too. Best advice I can give anybody is like, you know, everybody's skeptical, skeptical. I understand that. Well, here's a chance. You got a chance. You know, we don't realize we're sick. We are sick because the air we breathe, the water we drink and the food, there's hardly any magnesium left in the food and so on. So we just don't know it. So many times from here, life, you know, everything's fine. All of a sudden, down the road, maybe a year from now, two years from now, all of a sudden you get a sip. And, Ooh, what's that? And then you may go to the doctor and say, I got this. And the doctor turns around and says, well, geez, you know, you got this. And in some cases, you got this cancer and that cancer or whatever the case may be. You got diabetes. And now you say, oh, my God, what drug can I take? So now it's a prevention. So do it now. If you're, if you're feeling healthy, do it so you stay healthy. If you have illness, everybody has something, do it to actually mitigate that, that sickness and be happier and so on. I mean, it, it just makes too much sense. 
And some people, one final point, Roland, I'll make this quick, but because I know you run. People don't, oh, I don't have fine. Oh, I don't like that. This, that, that. Roland gets up. He says, I'm going to go for a run. He'll go out there and he'll run 5K or 10K. He says, God, I feel good. And I love it. And then you get the kid on the football field, same thing. He likes to go out there and run. But one day the coach says, all right, everybody, 10 laps. You've been late for class. Half the team's, oh, man, I don't want to. Same exercise. What's the difference? Right? So people whine and complain about, oh, I don't want to run. And you, and you enjoy it. It's the same exercise. So get into Chicago and just do it. And it finds you be so much, so much better. Try it. You'll love it. Yep. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. It's cheaper than medication, I'll tell you. Yeah. Sifu, I want okay. to uh, thank you wholeheartedly. I'm very grateful Thanks. that uh, you shared uh, all your experience with us. And I hope we can do this again uh, in, in a few, in a little while. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so uh, to all the 50-some people online with us today, it was a yeah. pleasure to know some of you, to see some of you. Many people I know. Richard List, my goodness. I'm my sorry, I <laughs> missed it. I missed it because of the timing. Could you send it to me? Uh, we will. Uh, Sifu, uh, Richard is also a Qigong Tai Chi practitioner out in Las oh, good. California. Yeah, I've been studying uh, with Robert. Do you know Robert Peng? I do. Yeah. No other. I yeah. see his stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to get a, a recording. I, it's because of the time. I'm on the West Coast. I thought it was an hour earlier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you, uh, Russell. Yeah. Nice to see you, Peter. Uh, everyone. Just, just, yeah. I don't want to go down the list, but thank you so much for your participation. Thank and you. We'll I'll, I'll do it when you now. send it to me. Thank you. I love to see yeah. all the people. Thank you yeah. so much for joining. All right, Roland. All right. Thank you, George. Thank you, Roland. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye.